the request went to the Department of Education and it was for information regarding Dr. Zais's uh, uh, activities and uh, we found some things we think the public should know about. Uh, I'm joined by two of my colleagues here today, Senator Hutto, Senator Shaheen, and uh, I'll make some opening remarks and then uh, we'll uh, look to them for comments. Uh, this is our uh, simple explanation. Uh, Dr. Zaysa's schedule shows from the middle of January to the middle of November that he was gone 35 days, uh, six days, six days for sick leave, 29 days for personal time, uh, and uh, that if you were working in the private sector or if you were a teacher uh, would be unacceptable. And we feel that uh, the department needs a full-time commitment and it needs hands-on management and we're concerned about whether or not that has happened. Um, during the time that uh, Dr. Zais was uh, at work on his schedule, he's also listed meetings with people like uh, Governor Rick Perry, uh, Mr. Grover Norquist, clearly not a friend of public education, Mr. Norquist. Governor Perry from a state that has uh, uh, an abysmal record in public education accomplishments, and so we worry about that. This is all about transparency in the sense that my initial request for freedom of information was met with a response that was, uh, that, that took my breath away. Uh, my original request for uh, freedom of information was met by a response that indicated that cost of fulfilling the request would be almost a half a million dollars. Let me put that into perspective for you. If you employed 10 people for an entire year and you paid each of them $40,000, which is more than the average person in the state makes, you would still have almost $100,000 left over to buy them pencils and paper to accumulate this information. Um, clearly, uh, the department was ob obfuscating, make sure I pronounced that correctly. Um, and our concern is that uh, the department, Dr. Zeiss, clearly knew that uh, I was concerned about where he was and his attendance. And so what we did get, uh, a large document, is clearly their best foot forward in regard to um, his being available to educators around the state, Department of Education, employees, the State Board of Education. And I just don't think that it, uh, that it measures up. It is a, an example, a continued example, of playing by a different set of rules. Playing by a different set of rules. Uh, rules that clearly uh, Dr. Zais would not accept uh, with his employees. And uh, he is employed by the people of the state of South Carolina. They need to know. Um, if you're not aware of it, as a student, if you miss 10 days, if you have unexcused absences for 10 days, you are not given credit for the year. And part of the reason, and, and educators know this better than I do, but the standards are comprehending and understanding. They, they don't believe, the education community doesn't believe you can comprehend and understand the educational material that a student is exposed to if you miss more than 10 days. And, and as I say clearly here, uh, there's a lot more than that uh, that has been missed. Uh, the department would contend that a constitutional officer works uh, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. But there was nothing to indicate uh, meetings on the weekend. There was nothing to indicate uh, anything that would uh, tell us that uh, there has been the kind of engagement that I think the public expected when they selected Dr. Zayas. Um, I will uh, turn it over to uh, my colleagues and then I'll finish up. <clears throat> Thank you all for being here today. You know, uh, this is a, a gentleman who represents a party who often says that uh, we want to run government like a business. Yet, if any business person had an employee with this record, they wouldn't be working for that company for long. If a teacher didn't show up for school 35 days, wouldn't even take that. They'd be fired long before that. As 
my colleague just indicated, a student would be held back. They wouldn't progress to the next grade level. This is a man who is drawing a full-time salary for a full-time job. He is not put in full-time hours, and he should return the pay for those hours beyond what other employees in his agency are allowed. There's a reason that we have statewide policies for sick leave and for personal time. And you know, quite frankly, if you go beyond that, you're not supposed to be paid for it, and you should suffer the consequences for it. As I said, a, an employee of a business that had this kind of record would probably be terminated in this at-will state. But our uh, superintendent uh, somehow thinks he's beyond those rules because he's a constitutional officer. Well, the people elected a full-time uh, superintendent of education, not a part-time superintendent of education. And we think he has, uh, he has disregarded his duties uh, in that regard, and he should at the very least pay back the citizens and the taxpayers who paid him for a full-time job. Let me just conclude my remarks by saying two things. In a time when teachers are being asked to do more with less, when uh, people throughout the state who have committed their lives to public education are being furloughed, given furlough days, and not uh, being allowed to uh, do the professional development that will help enhance education for our children. Uh, this is a great concern. And lastly, I would say, um, you may see this as, or try to see this as partisan, but it really isn't. The facts speak for themselves. Um, and my children, our four children, my wife and I, went to the public schools and we followed them through those schools and they gave them a basis uh, to be successful in college and move on. Uh, if we expect our public schools to be successful, then we have to lead by example and we have to uh, be very intense because we're in a competitive world market and even though we have private schools and I support them when I can. Even though we have homeschoolers and I meet with homeschool groups whenever they like. The vast majority of students now and for the foreseeable future, decades to come, uh, will be educated in the public schools. So with that, uh, we'll certainly open it up for any questions you might have. Or do one on one. Yeah, thank you all for being here. Thank, thank you very much. It.